Hi, in this video we are going to discuss about the metabolic effects of glucagon. So we know uh, glucagon is a hormone which is secreted from the alpha cells of the pancreas. So a pancreas contains an exocrine part which are the pancreatic acini and also the endocrine part which has the islets of Langerhans and it contains alpha, beta and delta cells. So glucagon is produced from the alpha cells of these islets of Langerhans. So what about beta cells? Beta cells produce insulin, right? So glucagon is the exact opposite of insulin. The function of glucagon is exactly opposite to that of insulin. That means glucagon is pro-diabetogenic, which means it increases the glucose level in the blood and it is ketogenic, which means it increases the keto acid level in the blood. Okay. So now moving on to the metabolic effects of glucagon. Glucagon has effect primarily on the carbohydrate metabolism as well as fat metabolism and its main site of action is the liver. So in the liver, it stimulates glycogenolysis, stimulate, produces gluconeogenesis and produce inhibition of glycogenesis. So you see it is exact opposite of that of insulin. So let's see how glucagon does it. In the liver, we know glucose is stored as glycogen. So glucagon stimulates the enzyme glycogen phosphorylase which converts this glycogen to glucose 6-phosphate. Now it is easier to, uh, to produce glucose from this glucose 6-phosphate. So this is the first action of glucagon which is stimulation of glycogenolysis. Now the second action is it increases the amino acid level and converts them into glucose. This is known as gluconeogenesis. So that is the second action of glucagon that is gluconeogenesis. Now the third action is these glucose can be converted to glycogen by the enzyme glycogen synthase. So what glucagon does is it will inhibit this glycogen synthase so that there will be inhibition of glyco glycogenesis. Okay, so what are the three actions? There is stimulation of glycogenolysis. Then there is uh, gluconeogenesis and also inhibition of glycogenesis by inhibition of glycogen synthase. Okay. So all these, th all these three effects will produce an increased release of glucose from the liver, which means there will be increased glucose in the bloodstream, which is just opposite of that of insulin. Okay. Next, we'll see the effect on fat metabolism. Here also, the site of action is the liver. So glucagon promotes lipolysis as well as ketogenesis. So in the liver, glucagon will promote lipolysis. That means it will increase the conversion of triglycerides to free fatty acids and glycerol. And we know that free fatty acids are converted into ketone bodies. So because lipolysis is increased, there is increased ketone body formation. Also, we know that there is an enzyme called malonyl-CoA. Actually, malonyl-CoA inhibits this transformation that is conversion of free fatty acid and to ketone bodies is inhibited by malonyl CoA. So what glucagon does is it will inhibit the decrease the level of malonyl CoA so that there will be more ketone body formation. Okay, so those are the two effects of uh, glucagon that means lipolysis and ketogenesis. Now we will see some other actions. Glucagon increases calorie genesis. Okay, and on the heart glucagon increases myocardial contractility. Therefore, glucagon is adequated for the treatment of heart disease. And also, it stimulates secretion of growth hormone, insulin and pancreatic polypeptide. So, these are some of the other actions of glucagon. Now, for some additional scoring points, you can also write about insulin-glucagon ratio. See, I said that glucagon is the exact opposite of insulin. So, the main function of insulin was to increase or release more glucose, was to store or decrease the level of glucose in the blood. Whereas the function of glucagon is to increase the amount of glucose in the blood. So whenever there is starvation, we want glucagon level to rise up so that there will be increased release of glucose into the blood. And whenever we are in the fed state, we want insulin levels to go up. So there should be an ideal ratio of, there should be a fine balance between insulin and glucagon so that the blood glucose level can be kept as normal. So that is the importance of insulin glucagon ratio. Next, in the applied physiology, you can also write about a tumor called glucagonoma in which there will be excess stimulation of glucose, excess production of glucagon and can produce hyperglycemia. Okay. So those are the additional sc scoring points. I know you uh, understood the concept. I think you understood the concept. Thank you.